O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears, neither reward us according as to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine and heresy and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression and conspiracy and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, that it may please thee to rule and govern thy whole church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, Joseph, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We 
we beseech thee to hear us the Lord. Then may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us the Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all humanity. We beseech thee to hear us the Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of Mary, the holy God-bearer, Thomas, and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant with me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out of the wilderness. And was in, he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lent is called the season of preparation because it is meant for us to prepare for the celebration of Easter, and it also serves as the purpose to remember that without the miracle of the resurrection, there is no Easter and really no point to the passion and the crucifixion. And as we have started our Lenten journey, we are offered the opportunity to step back and enter into the very beginning of the central action of God's plan of salvation, which is meant to reorder, to reconcile us, to, to have a whole and full life with God and to recognize that we are no longer alone or left to ourselves to figure the way back home when we feel so lost. What we hear this day is good news. The time is fulfilled. As we hear in today's gospel and return to the start of Jesus's ministry, as we begin Lent with our readings from Mark, we get an ever clearer sense of the good news being a journey toward something, not hearkening back. And in Jesus, God comes to us, putting God's plan fully into action. Who is this Jesus here in the very beginning? He is the one announced. And this one hears and heeds what is declared by the Spirit of God, proclaimed as the Son, the Beloved, and driven into the wilderness, heralding the good news of God's mission as he returns. He is the one who invites us into the divine action of God, so we are included. And this is our story, it's not just history. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness and drives us too. When you consider it, there's something altogether illogical about what happens after this first scene. Our natural inclination is to avoid the wilderness, that which is a desert or barren wasteland. That's how we're wired to first address our, our survival and protection, and then embrace what we can solidify and build up for ourselves. So instead of going where our own head would be inclined, the Spirit of God beckons us, drives us to somewhere that seems counterintuitive, the wilderness. And yet it is the wilderness that we sometimes have finally been forced to strip away all that would otherwise color or even obscure our view of God, giving way to a whole new dimension of our conversation, our intimacy with God. That's what we see in the Old Testament. We see God clearest in the wilderness. But there is still more that Mark invites us to consider in this good news journey as we have this day. When the Spirit immediately drives him into the wilderness, we want to avoid that which we would call the wilderness for ourselves. And instead, we tend to prefer the opposite place, a place we build up for ourselves, the city. The place and structure we build for ourselves to feel comfortable and secure and even hide behind when we so choose within our walls. But it is within these structures where we seem to run out of room for God to live and move within us. 
We stop seeking transformation and begin to resist any change. Again, this is what we encounter throughout the Old Testament. It's always in the city in which we tend to run so full of ourselves that we are alone and in trouble. And what we read throughout God's word is that true change or real transformation doesn't seem to occur within what's comfortable, secure, and settled within ourselves. It is with the wilderness that this happens when we see God clearly. So a question becomes, as we hear this, our story, what is our wilderness? In this context, it's a place or an aspect of our lives which is not yet fully formed, in which we find ourselves at odds with the ways of the world, what or how we can see ourselves and our neighbors in the world, at least the way it's been. The wilderness, it, it could be parenthood. It could be marriage. It could be your workplace, school. It's that which is still not fully known by ourselves, what we haven't built up alone, where we can see God clearly. What makes Jesus, and not just what we hear, but heed the Holy Spirit, is more than something we alone hold on to. This was not about Jesus striving on his own, pulling up his bootstraps and being clever out in the wilderness. It was about his absolute trust that God is present and directing, empowering, compelling, driving. This is true for us too, which is what Mark makes it clear for us. God is present in our wilderness. As messy, as complex, broken, and disappointing as this time or the place of our wilderness may be, God is present and seeking us to be present with. When we trust the one who beckons us to keep moving on this journey, then suddenly the wilderness, it doesn't seem so scary. Because our relationship, our trust, we somehow can't help but journey on because there's more than just ourselves. The only way to grow in that kind of trust is to grow in our relationship with God as he beckons us to journey on with God. It is only by developing our relationship with God that our faith as a trust truly grows. We can then allow the Spirit to drive us to that next place we need to go. It may be an actual wilderness, it may be a figurative wilderness, to become what God calls each of us to live into as God's child, the beloved as well. You and me, we too are called by name and invited into the divine action of God, even in the midst of our wilderness. With Lent, we are invited to discover more together. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he, gave, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And to now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Using the prayer adapted by our National Cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and remain with you this day, this season, and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.